Good morning, and welcome to St. Paul the Apostle Catholic Church. Today we celebrate the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please rise as we sing our opening hymn, We Gather Together. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today is the 15th week in Ordinary Time, and today in the Gospel, we're going to hear the parable of the sower and the seeds, basically talking about the way in which the Word of God enters or has a hard time entering our hearts. That the way that it has a hard time seeking in and permeating who we are. And so to prepare ourselves to listen to the words of Jesus and to break bread together, let's start by calling to mind the times that the word hasn't entered our life and let's invite God's grace in one more time. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christe eleison, Christe eleison. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory and salvation for your people. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead all of us to everlasting life. Amen. For your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, our God, almighty Father, glory, ah, glory, ah, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. 
You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Gloria, Gloria, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One, you Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory, glory to God in the highest and on earth. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to all who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are called Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to your love and to the name of Jesus, and to strive after all that does it honor and glory. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You care for the earth, give it water. You fill it with riches. Your river in heaven brims over to provide its grain. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. And thus you provide for the earth. You drench its furrows you level it, soften it with showers. You bless its growth. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You crown the year with your goodness. Abundance flows in your steps. In the pastures of the wilderness it flows. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruit.
fruitful harvest. The hills are girded with joy, the meadows covered with flocks, the valleys are decked with wheat. They shout for joy, yes, they sing. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with great expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, for redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Christ is the sower. All who come to him will have life forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And Jesus spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell upon the path and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirty-fold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. Afterwards, the disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? Jesus said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given and he will grow rich, and anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look, but they do not see, and hear, but they do not understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You shall indeed hear, but not understand. You shall indeed look, but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. 
They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and hear what you hear, but did not hear it. So understand, then, the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it, and the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it with joy at once, but he, because he has no root, it only lasts for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who, under, who indeed bears and yields a hundred or sixty or thirty-fold. The Gospel of the Lord. So, long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, when I was in Boy Scouts as a little kid, I remember one of the um, pieces of advice they gave us to stop us from burning down the entire camp, because really, again, what else is Boy Scouts other than a way to stop kids from basically burning things down irresponsibly? So one of the first lessons they taught us um, was basically the easiest fire to put out is the one that's never started. It always stuck with me. It's a little pithy. But basically, the problem that you never get going is, of course, the easiest one to solve because you never have to do anything about it. And that's a little bit of the sense of what I get from the gospel today and a little bit of the difficulty as well. I mean, we hear about all these situations where in trying to be Christian, Either the world or our own heart gets in the way. And we hear this one little exception here at the end um, that is almost so vague that it's, it's hard to really appreciate what Jesus means when it says, and this is when people hear the word and understand it. What? Because more often than not, I don't know about you, I feel like I'm on the path of the kingdom stumbling along. I feel like it, it takes me a little longer to understand what Jesus is actually saying. Not just understand, but to appropriate that in my own heart. To let that sink in, to let my life simmer in that grace. So then, if the fire is already started, if the seed is sown but parched, if it gets choked by weeds, what do we do? Because at one point or another, I think most of us find ourselves in that situation. And sometimes our Catholic tradition isn't always um, the best on what to do in that in-between space where we feel like the Word of God it might have been, at the very least, muted in our lives, if not taken away altogether. And there are a couple of ways of thinking about this. If you could think about sin and all those things that get in the way of us being able to hear God, those actions that we do that kind of get in the way of grace, that act as really a, a block. You could think about sin maybe like a penalty. You're either guilty, you're not guilty. It's a little binary, a little too much so, because oftentimes when we feel that word choked out of us, we feel like there's very little we can do while we're out there, while we feel like, while we're in that place where we feel like we might have really messed up. But there's another way of also thinking about this, and we have to think about them together. Another way of thinking about this is sin as a disease of the heart. And just because you're at a certain point with a sickness doesn't mean necessarily that you stop taking medication. If anything, it means that's the point where you ask for help even more. In some ways, 
when we find ourselves in the situation of someone who has had the Word of God snatched away or who's had it withered in their own heart from worry or anxiety, it's learning how to pray in those moments of desolation in your own heart, in our own hearts, that at least is the first step to regaining some sense of wholeness, regaining some sense of the fruitfulness that can come about from listening to God, from being led by God in life. Because it's in this way a little more of a path. A lot of early church writers like to think about this as the image of God being repaired in the human soul, not just as a liberation from a sort of uh, legal definition of sin, but it's a repairing of who we are bit by bit. And so it's, it's a walk. We walk forward, we slip back, but ultimately there's always a sense of movement. There's always a way in which we find ourselves somewhere along that path. And, because precisely, and precisely because it is a path, and that way we always have that presence of God there, even in the moments of stumbling, even in the moments of slipping, even in the moments when the word is choked out, the word is still whispering. The word is still talking to us. There is no place where the word stops being gracious and stops inviting us to bear fruit. And it's in those moments that we fall down where we have to pray for that grace to not be afraid. Or to pray for the sense that we are worthy still because God loves us, and that makes us worthy, aside from anything that we do. It's God's love that gives us that worth that no one can take away, that no action of ours can take away. And so then, even with the parable of the sower, there are ways in which all the people that Jesus talked about who are images of the rocky ground, who are images of the word being choked out by thorns, still have the possibility to bear fruit, still have the possibility to become that rich soil. And so then, as we continue our prayer today, let's pray for that grace to not be afraid, to always have the courage given by God to ask for God what we need to continue along the journey to ask for bread to strengthen us and grace to make us holy. And so, confessing together our faith in God who loves us, we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let our prayer give voice to the needs of, of all creation, which awaits with eager longing for God's word to accomplish its purpose.
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, may the church spread the seed of God's word in all places, trusting that this effort will reap a great harvest. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our world, may nations cooperate in the effort to eliminate the COVID virus. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country in need of racial justice, May long-standing fears and hatred for persons of a different race from one's own vanish in the recognition of Christ's face in each human being. We pray Let to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer from the COVID-19 virus, for their caregivers, and for those who mourn the loss of loved ones who have died during this pandemic. May physical and emotional healing continue, and may medical researchers find a cure or a vaccine. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, May we not shut our eyes to suffering around us, nor stop our ears to cries for help. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our faithful departed, especially King Fong Palm, may rejoice to become the first fruits of the new creation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we now hold in the silence of our hearts. May these prayers be joined to the prayers of our patron, St. Paul, and servant of God, Father Isaac Hecker. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, sower of the seed, may your word bear abundant fruit in our hearts as we bring our prayers before you. And we pray this in the name of your word made flesh, the Lord Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
simple. We should take him at his word, and our lives would be thanksgiving for the goodness of our Lord. Stand now and pray with me, brothers and sisters. Pray that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Amen. Lord, look on the offerings of your church as she makes her prayer to you and grant that when consumed and received by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness and joy of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly, it is right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Jesus our Lord. For by your word you created all things, and you governed the universe in harmony, and you gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you. He is the truth that sets us free and the life that fills us with gladness. And through your Son, you gather men and women of every time and place whom you've made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Holy Spirit. And so, now and for ages unending with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. God, you are holy and to be glorified, you who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present always in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. And so, Father of mercy, we ask that you send forth the gift of your Holy Spirit to sanctify and make holy these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when, sun, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And so, Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus, your Son, our Savior and Lord, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. 
and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. By our sharing in this mystery, Father, give us life through the gift of your Holy Spirit. Grant that we may always be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in communion together with Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, with all other bishops, priests, and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, Lord that sharing in the grief and pain of all, their joy and their hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation through Jesus and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. And remember also all of our brothers and sisters who have died in the peace of your Christ. And remember all the dead Lord, whose faith you alone have known Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection grant them the fullness of life. And to us also, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, grant that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saint Paul, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Called together by the Lord and gathered in the name of Jesus, we pray now as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil and graciously grant us peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of his peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those who are here for the first time in a while, we have a new method of doing communion. Basically, we'll um, do it section by section, starting over here, working our way back. Then this side here in the middle will go starting from the back, coming forward. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Um, the front will go first, dismissing backwards. And then we'll work our way around here. And so then um, the front on this side will be the last part to receive and then we also have these blue boxes here. So when you come up to receive communion, um, you put your hand as normal, amen, and then you'll move over to one of the boxes. You can remove your mask and then consume communion at that time. Thank you for your understanding and the way that we do this now. Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O oh saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. With joyful lips we sing to you our praise and gratitude. Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Is not the cup we bless and share the blood of Christ our poor? One cup, one loaf, declare our oneness in the Lord. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread.
satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, Lord, that by our sharing in this mystery, its saving effects may always grow within us. Through Christ our Lord. See if we have any announcements in the old folder. That is a negative. So uh, thank you all of us who are joining um, by the internet. Uh, in our celebration today and um, it's wonderful to see so many of you for the first time in a while um, so it, it gives a sense of hope for me that we can even in this limited way um, break bread together once more the Lord be with you may the blessing of Almighty God Father Son and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever go in the peace of Christ Yeah.